Hello, you are watching this video because you most likely have a real human skeleton in your closet. These things happen, so today we're going to take you through the steps of how to safely pack and assemble a real human skeleton for safe shipping. This here on my right is an authentic, real Adam Ruley medical skeleton. This was originally possessed by a doctor in 1970. Unfortunately, the individual passed away and the Bone Museum and John's Bones were able to acquire it. Our goal is to get these pieces back into the educational field and raise more awareness on the medical bone trade. So recently, a university was able to purchase this skeleton and we want to show you guys how to safely pack it in case you find yourselves in this situation. Here at the Bone Museum, we work with members of the general public and all of the pieces that we work with are real human skeletons that need to be treated with respect and dignity and we want to preserve them to the best of our ability. And part of that process is making sure that they get to their destination safely. So let's talk about what you're going to need to pack this full skeleton. It is quite simple. Number one, thinner's tape. Number two, regular tape. Some saran wrap. Arguably the most important thing is bubble wrap. Packing peanuts. And a large box. Now, if you're watching this at home, you have to use your own judgment. Every single skeleton is unique. This individual was a little bit more petite and smaller than other medical skeletons. So use whatever box you think would fit it best, but typically we recommend it to be torso size. So as long as the torso can fit in the box, it should work just fine. Now that we have gone over the materials, let's take a look at some parts of the skeleton that we need to be aware of. The most fragile part of a full human skeleton is oftentimes the rib cage. We want to ensure that this part is protected to the best of our ability. When looking at it, some of the ones that you might have at home might have either a cork sternum, a wood sternum, a resin sternum, or a traditional beef jerky sternum, which we're showing on screen right now. The rib cage can get crushed and repairing the skeleton is extremely challenging. So please be aware when packing the skeleton that this is the point that you want to protect the most. Next is the teeth. Oftentimes the teeth of a real skeleton can be brittle and if not adequately packed and bubble wrapped, it can shatter and break in transit. So this is another part of the skeleton to be aware of. The last weak point in the skeleton that you should be aware of is both of the scapula. They are oftentimes paper thin and with older medical skeletons, they are prone to crack. Now that we've covered some of the weak points of the skeleton, let's look at the anatomy of an anatomical skeleton and the ways that we can disassemble it. In our time, almost every medical skeleton can be disassembled. This is how you are going to send it to us. Now the goal is to break the full skeleton down to just the base torso. This is what's gonna allow you to pack it into the box. So every single anatomical skeleton can be disassembled, meaning that the arms can be moved based on the joints here, as well as the legs and the skull. So let's take you through some of these steps. Now this is a more modern skeleton from the 70s, but we have worked with medical skeletons from 1880s and onwards. We have seen situations where the joints and the ball bearings get stuck. If this happens situationally, look at it and figure out if you can remove it from here or here. Sometimes there's two points where the legs can be removed, and we have had clients in the past that was not aware of this, so we wanted to point this out to you. From the 50s and onwards, medical skeletons switch to stainless steel jewelry, and oftentimes we have no issues taking the arms and legs off, but we found that older skeletons oftentimes use copper and brass. So through there, if you find any oxidization or patinaing in the bolts, if you use a pair of pliers, you should be able to safely remove them, but it is important important that you're able to get the arms, legs, and skull off. And now we're going to take you through how to disassemble the skeleton. First, you want to start off by removing the bolts at the top of the humerus here. Please, once you remove the nut out, just reinsert it back into the arm so we know exactly where it goes and we do not lose it. Now, every full skeleton is unique, so please be aware of that. For instance, if the arms are able to be folded inwards perfectly like this, just pack it like such. But if sometimes medical skeletons, they stop and lock right here, then you're gonna have to pack it straight. Next, we're removing the legs. Please, if the pelvis is able to be removed, do not remove it, leave that on. Awesome, you have successfully removed the arms and legs off of this individual. Now we're moving on to the skull. You want to set it down on your table on some bubble wrap. And now you remove the skull. Typically it will have a nut at the top of the skull cap that's going to hold it in place to the rest of the skeleton. They stopped doing this for modern skeletons, but please be aware that for older skeletons, they used to pin the top of the skull 
with the atlas. So sometimes if you're trying to remove it, you will have to pull it out of the pins. That's completely fine and we'll be able to slide it back in once we get into the museum. But be aware of this when you are in the process of removing the skull. The next steps on wrapping it are quite simple, but it's more about the philosophy of how we keep the skeleton safe. So take a look here. You want to use the arms and legs to protect the torso and the rib cage. So what you do after the pieces are bubble wrapped is you secure them to the side here and here and essentially you use it as a protector. So however way that the skeleton fits allows for it to be reinforced. It also puts the skeleton in a box shape which helps it fit into the box better. The next step after that is once the skull is fully wrapped, which we'll show you how to do in the next step, you're going to place it in the abdomen area. Some skulls will fit in nice and snug, other skulls won't, so use your best description. If the skull does not fit and the box is big enough, you could just put the skull elsewhere, but we always recommend trying to fit it within the pelvis because it's one of the safest places that the skull can be. The next part is wrapping the torso. So what we want to do is cut little strips of bubble wrap and then interweave in between the rib cage in order to protect it to the best of our ability. Now that you have successfully interwoven the bubble wrap around the ribs, just keep wrapping it around and around and around until you have a faint outline of the ribs. This ensures that they are protected to the best of the ability. But when you're weaving them, make sure not to snag on the rib and then snap it inadvertently. Once you are done with this step, you want to get bubble wrap and you want to begin packing the inside of the rib and filling it out. That way, if there's any impact or trauma during the delivery, the ribs don't get crushed. It's a one-man job, but it takes two hours on your own. Awesome, now we're gonna move on to the next step of getting the arms and legs wrapped up, so we'll check in with you in a bit. And now pad the pelvis. All right, once you get to this stage, the rest is pretty simple. Any bone that you see just gets wrapped up. Just keep wrapping the torso with bubble wrap. Once you have it fully wrapped, then add the arms and legs to the side and then tape them all together to create a strong structure. At this stage, you now have to pack the skull. We already have a video on our channel, you can see it up here, on how to fully pack the skull, but you only want to get to the saran wrap stage. So at this point, put either paper towel or bubble wrap in between the teeth to avoid it from clattering and shattering, and then wrap it up with saran wrap. That way, in any instance that the skull gets damaged in transit, we're able to have everything contained and isolated within the saran wrap, and then from there, put it within the abdomen of the skeleton. So at this point, this skull has been fully wrapped and you want to do it to the point where it's barely transparent. Okay. 
So at this stage, we have created a protective frame around the skeleton. This should protect both the skull and the torso. After this, you want to tape it all together to make sure that we have a rigid and strong structure that can survive shipping. The last step is putting the full skeleton into the box. We recommend doing around three to four inches of packing peanuts in between the skeleton and the box itself. So start by putting some peanuts, setting the skeleton into the box, patting the packing peanuts around it, and then sealing off the top. We always recommend finding a box that fits the skeleton well. For instance, this one's a little bit larger than it needs to be, but we like to ensure that it arrives safely, so we tend to overpack. But if you are able to fit it in a box that fits the skeleton snugly, as long as there's padding around it, it should be fine. Oh, I'm having a blast right now. This is, this is what I signed up for. Oh. This part you might need an extra person for, suspending the skeleton while you pad peanuts around it. Make sure to shimmy the box and really work the peanuts around. The goal here is not to overpack. If there's too much padding in here, if there's any type of trauma or blunt force, it could actually crush the contents inside, so it's a Goldilocks zone. You don't want to underpack where the skeleton is rattling. You don't want to overpack where it's too stuffed, and if anything breaks, then it'll break the skeleton. This here is a two-part box, so there's no lid on this one. So you get two separate boxes. One is a slightly smaller size, and it seamlessly slides in. I recommend that any box will fit will probably work. Thank you so much for watching. It's really our goal to preserve these pieces to the best of our ability. This one is going outbound to a university so this skeleton can educate future doctors and anatomists alike. But if you are sending a piece inbound to the Bone Museum, we thank you so much for trusting us. And it's our goal to make osteology more accessible for everybody. And we can't wait to have this piece on display at the Bone Museum in Brooklyn, New York.